Good evening. I'm Brian the Carpenter, and I'll be your host tonight. Ken Duke is unable to attend as he is off gallivanting about the countryside, although we may get a check-in from him later. So for those that tuned in expecting to be comforted by Ken's soft, soothing voice and enlightened by the knowledge he shares with us weekly, I must apologize for this is about to be something different. I've been involved with Bass Fishing Podcast for 10 years now with Ike Live and Bass U, but I've never been thrust against my will into the role of hosting. Speaking in front of people has always been a problem for me, going back to like sixth grade. So this is pretty stressful. Um, facing a personal challenge here. You know, co-hosting this show with Ken Duke was a step up. Now hosting. Anyhow, it's terrifying. With that said, I intend to do my best tonight, but fully expect to suck. And it is in that line of thinking that I came up with the topic, you know, the, 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 for tonight's show. Worst lures of all time. Seems the perfect fit. A lot of symmetry here. In preparing for this week's show and talking with my co-host, who I'll introduce shortly, we had settled on a fantastic show topic that he and I were really excited for. It was at that very moment, as I was about to text this guy or reach out to this legend of the sport, that I realized I'm not going to do it justice. I'm not going to do it as good as it should be. And and that's not fair to you guys. Um, you know, Ken Duke's going to take it to another level. And, and, that's, and that's, that's, that's what we intend to do. It's not true to what we intend to be, which is the, the best bass fishing podcast week in and week out. Welcome to Bass After Dark, the most illuminating conversation in bass fishing. For the next 90 minutes or so, I'll be stuttering, stammering, and tripping over my words trying to get through this. Attempting to show you that inch for inch and pound for pound, this is the best uh, bass fishing show around. We have a stacked deck tonight. Trust me, I stacked this lineup in my favor. These may be the last words I'm able to get in the show tonight. Co-hosting with me tonight is my very good friend, an ultimate bass fishing hype man. This man could sell, could sell garlic and holy water to Travis Manson. He is the co-host of the Smallmouth Crush podcast and a scientist behind the Bass Lab, Mr. Epic Eric Golasso. <laughs> what an introduction, man. <laughs> BPC, man. You sexy beast. Look at that. You got a smoking jacket? At uh, fans, you got I look, man, fans of Bass After Dark. I have to tell you, he did a little fashion show prior. He had multiple hats picked out. This guy has been prepping, man. We've been talking multiple times this week, discussing show notes. BTC, you are the best fake producer in the game. Well, and you don't uh, show producer up. anymore. Co host. And now host. You just got promoted, bro. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, Thanks, and man. I did not want to. Yeah. No. No. We, we got a whale of an echo when uh, coming off your end, I think. Yeah. Do you really? I think so. I heard mm -hmm. something there. So, guys, tonight, uh, hang in there till the end. Our top 10 predictions for 2024. Uh, it took a long time. Uh, I think ultimately it's a really good list, although me, Ken, and, and Natron uh, fought over it terribly. Uh, it's, it's about to be the end of the, the – uh, I mean, it's, it's going to drive us all the way to the end. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> um, but anyhow. I uh, also want to say that our, the search for our intern is has yielded some fruit. I'd like to oh. introduce everyone to Jacob Morrison. Jake will be in the YouTube comments tonight. He's a 23-year-old graduate from SUNY Environmental Science and Forestry with a degree in aquatic and fishery sciences. Grew up fishing the cold water species, a bit of a trout fisherman. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, probably a fly fisherman, but I said I wouldn't say that because there's this weird thing right now where people bust on fly fishermen. But uh, there is? yeah, and Look, oh, so he he, uh, he got into bass light. fishing. He got into bass fishing in college. Um, you know, joined the the college bass team, and from there to here, here he is. Yeah, good deal, man. Jake, oh, welcome, welcome, congratulations, Jake. Um, yes, sir. I'm a fellow. I'm a fellow fly fisherman, man. That's where a lot of my inspiration comes from. Some of my bass lab creations was because I tied flies 
for over a decade, man. And there's I nothing did, like it, man. Yeah, I did a little bit when I lived in Nevada and I was really bored. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love it. I still love it, man. There's nothing like waiting in a stream, man, and working a working a trout. Everybody says the audio is crisp and perfect. Maybe it's the echo in your head. Probably is. Probably is. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, BTC, you did a good job. All right, man. We got a good show tonight, man. Yeah. Let's uh let's let's get it going. We got three outstanding eclectic guests. It's a very eclectic mix, I should say. Um, yep. But, but let's get it going. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready, man. I'm so All ready right. for this. I got some All show right. and tell, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our first oh. guest is an 18-year veteran currently fishing the Elite Series, qualified for 11 classics, in the money, 140 out of 196 events, over 2 wow. million winnings. We have Steve Kennedy. Oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> or do we? Steve I see his name. <laughs> All right, Steve. Great to hear from you, Steve. Um, looking good as always. Thank you. Uh, next into the, <laughs> into the <laughs> show. <laughs> Steve, Steve was great. I knew he would be. Uh, we've all watched our next expert panelist in, <laughs> in Terrible Wars and Late Night Decisions grow up right before our eyes. He's gone from the nature boy young grasshopper to the host what is probably the longest running most viewed bass fishing podcast bass talk live we got the panger matt pangrack oh hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm, just I'm, not, with you. I'm just messing with you brian <laughs> i knew he was doing that, that opening, you got, you that got opening montage you should just get hired out as like a professional best man speech giver uh yeah, yeah nah. I, true story man. i uh i had to get up a buddy of mine i haven't talked to in 20 years used to play hockey yeah he had, i had to read like you know a thing at his wedding yeah. get up there yeah. I don't know, yeah. it was three lines yeah. three paragraphs or something i didn't know anybody there by the time i got to that bottom paragraph my view was like that dude <laughs> i didn't realize it but i was this close man <laughs> to pass it out <laughs> i was so close i powered through it and everybody's like no oh, you were great i'm like Pfft. dude i was looking I through a famous. freaking straw no oh, you're doing a hell of a job what's up well, yeah. what's going Steve. on man welcome welcome man i'm stoked to hear your opinions on this one man i am oh. looking forward to it there's steve oh he actually is frozen now <laughs> It's great. Um, For my expertise, if Steve is on Wi-Fi, he needs to go to uh, his cell phone data. And if he's on his cell phone data, he needs to go to Wi-Fi. And then if he's on Wi-Fi, he needs to be closer to the router. I don't think he has Wi-Fi. I think he's cell, he's cell phone data. Uh, he probably uh, built the tower of cell. Mm -hmm. So moving right along. <laughs> and finally, we welcome a mountain of a man stepping into the ring at 6'5 and a heavyweight limit of 265 pounds. He's a doctor, a historian, an inventor, and for sure the loudest man in the room, Dr. Terry Battisti. Hello. <laughs> Look at good, Terry. <laughs> oh. Dr. Bunsen Bar Honey Bun, or whatever the hell they call it. <laughs> That's him. That's right. That's awesome. That's cool. you. Hey. <laughs> I'll take that compliment. That's yeah. right. Matt, did you yeah. know who that was? Yeah, I know who, I know who Terry is. I've known Terry. I didn't know who the picture was that you pulled up. Was that from Sesame Street? Yeah. The no. The Muppets. The Muppets. Oh, no. No, I was never, I a, I was never a Muppeteer. <sighs> Mr. Uh, so here we are. Um, I guess we're gonna try to get Steve logged in somehow. I don't know. He sounds like he's just got weak Wi Fi. I don't think so. It's gonna work for Mr. Kennedy. So here we are. Um, I was thinking that we would start more modern and work backwards. Terry, you had a problem with that. I don't have a problem with it. I just I'm an engineer, dude. I, I, I want to go from the beginning to the end. 
But mm -hmm. it, you know, I, I mean, I got some. I got a whole bunch of stuff from the forties on. Yeah, I think wow. Nate's got you turned way down, Terry. <laughs> oh, really? I think so. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, better. Better. Yeah. yeah. More volume. Yeah. Two down. Hey. Oh, there we go. Hey, are we What's in? Up, there Steve? he is. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the iPad. Maybe this will work. We were trying to. Use yeah. The oh, way better. Heck way yeah. better. Heck yeah. Now we're cooking with gas. Come on, nice. Brian. Anyway, this is exactly what I expected. Thank you so much. Could, could only go this way. So, so it's that, 12 minutes track. in, man. 12 minutes in, man. 12 minutes what in. Do Don't fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> what do I miss? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Brian's vision slowly going like this, just about to pass out because he knew there would be technical difficulties when it came time for him to host the show. But he gave you a great introduction, Steve Kennedy. 140 some odd times in the money, $2 million worth of winnings. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah, pretty stout. That up, probably pushing three, you know? Uh, oh, Brian, <laughs> did you leave out a cool that's million dollars? What's going on? Like, that's just I mean, I, So, yeah. I, talk to Basket. That's, yeah, Canada. we did uh, FLW, PAA, all of that. But, yeah, I think I broke three see, mil already. See, that's why Ken Duke needs to be, needs to be right. here right now. Hey, he hey, wouldn't have made that mistake. Ken, Ken would have never missed that. He is the man with... With the numbers for sure. Absolutely. Terry, huh? Turn yourself up. We did. No, I think it's good. Is that any better? Oh, yeah. 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 All right. All right. Good. Go ahead, Terry. You? Usually, usually you want my mic on the other side of the room. I know. So. <laughs> I'm paying for that right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So, All right. so. I, I, you know, I was thinking that we would start modern and work backwards. And you kind of said, like, the sweet spot of really, really bad wars is like the 80s up till now. Yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, if you're talking about really, in my eyes, really bad stuff. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. The worst. But, we are. The worst. Yeah. I, yeah my, Salute. my number one and my number two are from the uh, early 80s and the early 2000s. So, but I got, like I said, I got stuff that goes all the way back to 1940s. So, you know, that's whatever these guys want to do. Oh, yeah. Matt, my time. <laughs> they've been making really bad things since they could, you know, catch fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has always been a Brian, snake oil salesman. Brian, you have the con, man. I mean, let's, let's yeah. start with the 80s, rocking 80s, and then move backwards. Let's go. Freeform it. I mean, I mean, the first thing that everybody says when the question's brought up is the helicopter lure. That's the number one across the board when you say the worst. Everybody says that. I've never thrown it, but I bet it gets – and it's ridiculous. You know, <laughs> They sell those but, at adult stores, don't they? Uh, you tell me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's but I imagine it does actually get big because sure. it's a, got a good top order action to it, I think. Has anyone here thrown it? I can I confirm know. that it does not have a good top water action. <laughs> right. I've actually seen a couple of YouTube videos with people catching fish on the damn thing. Don't believe that. It's no, it's one hundred percent true. <laughs> Steve, what are your uh, helicopter lure modifications, Steve? Yeah. I, I can't say I've ever caught a fish on one. <laughs> uh, I do remember throwing it when I was a kid, and. Uh, I actually talked to my dad. I asked this question to my dad before I came on, and uh, that's the lure that came to mind for him. But then he said he was down at Seminole out there on the dock at the house they're staying at, and some guy threw out there and caught an eight-pounder on it, first cast. So, <laughs> it has caught a fish. <laughs> but, uh, well, Roland, you're safe. But, that, but that's, yeah, that's probably number one on my list as far as uh, – you know, promoted by a tournament angler. That's that's mm -hmm. number one. <laughs> it was pretty yeah. bad. It's pretty bad. I, I have yep. ahead, well, I have photographic evidence of this. I confronted Roland Martin about the effectiveness of the helicopter lure at the nineteen ninety eight Bassmaster Classic. Do tell. And we were at the, the black tide dinner. I was thirteen years old and I walked up to him and I said, Hey, I said I got your helicopter lure and I'm not that impressed with it. <laughs> 
Did you? I did. And there is photographic evidence of this conversation going on. And he's like gesturing and what he's doing is telling me, I vividly remember this conversation about how you're supposed to throw it up in the weeds and reel it out from the reeds down there in the weeds down there in Florida. Mm. But yes, I've actually had a conversation about the helicopter lure with Roland Martin. He was sticking to his guns. <laughs> he was. He was. He was all in on it back in '98. Did, did you guys ever see the video that he made in 1994 oh, yeah. down in Mexico? That 19 pounder that someone supposedly caught on it. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, That's my kind of thing. Suspect. Yeah. Suspect. Yep. The other one for me, like, when you talk about as seen on TV, right, that's like its own class of lures. I think of the helicopter lure, the flying lure, um, the laser lure. Uh, Mighty Bite. Who? Yeah. The Mighty Bite. The, The Mighty Bite. Yeah, with the bite stick. Yep, with yeah. the bite stick. Million of commercials, man. I I kept seeing that going. Mm. And wasn't there what is that? Like curled up by itself. Yep. Oh yeah, there was that. Uh, what was that called? Yep. I can't remember what that one was, but you made me think of it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then Berkeley bought it, and then they made recoil worm. The recoil oh, worm was. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. The recoil worm. Yep. Then Chuck Woolery had his own, uh, you know, bass lure. Yeah, that you oh. get to pull string on it. Yep. I'm sure I'm sure glad you mentioned that moto chug by Chuck Woolery. Oh yeah, you got it. <laughs> there it is. Let's take it out and see if it still works. That's awesome. They go full screen on Eric. I, I must say the uh paint job is nice. Oh, Signed nicely yeah. by Mr. Woolery. I mean, they did take the time to tie some crystal flash in the tail right there. Oh, that's I'll nice. Give points for that. The hooks are fairly sharp, I'll say. But let's see. I'm going to pull the string. And baby, she is still working after all those years. I don't know, man. I might have to throw that on the bro Tomac this year. <laughs> That's pretty good to me. I, I think I'm going to get a stick hit on that thing. Look at that tail action. Look at that guy. Oh, man. I remember, I remember seeing Chuck at ICAST one year. I think we were out in Vegas. And look, I mean, that's a pretty darn good paint job. Let's see if it has a rattle. No, it's a silent. Moto Chuck, continuous live action. I'm not even going to attempt to read the back of that package, but there's a lot of information there. So Moto Chuck, man. But, uh, you know, I think I think that would be a really fun day just to take Have all you ever thrown it in? I would love to have a crappy lure, the worst lure. Worst bass lure in the world contest and see and do a random like exchange of lures and see if we catch them on it. I've never thrown it. I was brand new. And in fact, the viewer of uh, of the show, Small Mouth Crush, sent it to me. No rotating hook hanger. I was almost excited there. This little screw I right here is suspect. But anyway. yeah, I just wonder if you could reset reset it on a on a chug. You know I, what I mean? Know, you gotta, you gotta, I mean, I guess the water resistance catches the lip, right? And as you pop it, I mean, I'm not pulling that very hard, so you're going to get a loud chug. I don't know, man. I'm God, starting to get excited to about throwing this one, man. <laughs> I'd like to see what happens to that one. I got to see if there's any more on eBay in case I really love it. <laughs> there was, there Chuck was Lord, so Chuck's into fishing. Oh, yeah. The banjo lure. Banjo yeah, lure. Another info. But the flying lure and the banjo lure actually caught fish, though. I, they did. Yes, they they did. They're, they're not terrible for sure. But it's a fluke yeah. in a tube. Yeah, a, a backwards rig tube that would actually go under it's docks and stuff. Yeah. It, it, it reminds me of the spoon up at Kentucky Lake. It runs back away from you like that. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you think yeah. As Seen for TV was a good move on their part? Oh, yeah. They sold the shit out of stuff. Uh, yeah, I have right. no that was that during that whole infomercial craze, man. That whole infomercial craze. Yeah. Sham wow. You look at a lot of different yeah. products and product categories, man. People got sucked in. You got a dynamite spokesman. They go down to Mexico or some private lake and you're hooking fish. I mean, what else do you That's need? That's the cocaine see? filled it, 80s, it, right? It filled me, 80s. So. <laughs> yep. It probably right? worked, but I never bought them. Yeah. There you go, man. Tom Tom Pavlov says he knows a guy who can get tons more of the moto chug, so we're safe if it's working for you, Steve, on tour. Nice. You let us know. I got, I got one back, man. I got one here. And everybody on this show tonight wears dress shirts more than I do. I know that. Even you, Steve. 
Yes. Even you. <laughs> okay. You know what the worst thing? Dude, buttons on the sleeve. Why? Why? Do you guys struggle to, to, to button up your sleeve like I do? I do. <laughs> Are you trying to sell I me something? Do. That's freaking I horrible. I Don't be selling you know, Doug Hannon so snake oil lures, Brian. I have the Doug Hannon original ones. I don't know why I have them. Did I buy them? I'm not sure, but I got a package of them right there. Somebody mentioned it. I had to bring it up. I didn't see that mentioned in the comments. The That's Doug cool. Hannon snake. It's coiled. And like when you pop it, it's floating plastic. And when you pop it, it gives it a little bit of action because he said snakes are on the menu for large bass in Florida. This was a doesn't it have a hard plastic headie with a hook on it. So maybe this one wasn't it because no, this did not have a hard plastic head. I know the one you're talking about. This whole bait, this whole bait is soft, but it's that Z-Man Elastic type. I'm I'm afraid to open it because it's like oily in there. It's got a tab tail too, so it would catch a little water. You guys can't see that very well, but I'm not. That's a Doug Hannon snake. The snake, snake tricks. There was a snake trick, right? Snake that, tricks. that was bait made by Bill Norman. Bill snake Norman. Tricks. Did that have the hard head, Terry? No, it did not. It was a plastic worm, essentially. <laughs> okay. That's Got not it. a snake. This is a snake. <laughs> Go full screen on that. <laughs> Look at that thing. Good that's Lord. a mongo worm, man. What is that's, that? That's a Texas finesse worm. Holy moly. He is what a size one hook on that? Nose hook it? <laughs> sure. I don't think there's a good way to catch fish on it, but I would like to try it at Toledo. Man, I would. <laughs> Throw that thing down in Mexico. Might catch yourself a world record. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I think we have a. I don't know if Nate's got it queued up. We just got a check in from Ken Duke. Uh, okay. I think Ken's Ken's down in a, uh, a hedonism right now in Jamaica. So mm. I'm not sure if, if oh, wow. Nathan's got that queued up, but Ken just sent us a little video from from hedonism. He's he likes to party. It's it's a pretty amazing guy. You, you know, very, play it? a lot more to him than you would think. You know, are we playing that video? Uh, as soon as Nathan gets it queued up. Oh, how right many on. times you say you've been here? Forty times. Forty times. For, wh why? I mean, why? What, what brings you to hedonism that many times? The wild women. The wild, the wild women. The ripping and the tearing. The ripping and the tearing. <laughs> I didn't need to say that. <laughs> That's Kendrick uh, checking in from Jamaica. Hedonism. <laughs> He likes to party, folks. Don't judge. He's a good man. He's a good man. Holy hell. Thank you, Ken. Keep the updates coming. Oh, God. All right, Matt. What do you got for us? Well, where are we starting? I got I got nine of them, but I kind of went more. I didn't go more. I went more like stuff you'd find in a tackle shop that you were like maybe kind of excited to get. And then it just mm -hmm. straight up sucked. So the yeah. first thing, the first thing that came to my mind was the Berkeley gulp turtleback worms when gulp was the big thing. And then they came out with the big long designs and they were like, they had zero action. They did. Yep. Nope. That's not it. That's a different worm that the, the turtleback worms to me, like that was back when gulp was, was, was a big deal. And they just oh, yeah. had not figured it out yet. Is anyone else on the same page with those? I mean, oh, oh, yeah, there uh, they are, uh, right there. Yeah, those things. Su super stiff, man. Terrible. Yeah, super stiff. Zero action. I remember the guys from Berkeley trying to trying to hawk these things when they first came out, and behind the scenes, they're like, "Dude, we can't catch one on it." <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh, remember that man. at all. Oh my gosh! But they didn't last very long. Uh oh, that's a good one, though, Matt. Yeah. There's nothing worse than buying a bait. That yeah, zero and action. then after they were about six months old, they would be just – they would be like the Sahara Desert when you opened up a pack. They would just be <laughs> dr dry as a boat. Like, couldn't even fish them. Like, you'd have to, like, rehydrate them. Uh, yeah. they, I mean, yeah, they were just – they were the, the worst plastic – one of the worst plastic worms that came out on the market, in my opinion. Now, Berkeley tries mm. 
700 different shapes, designs, and styles every single year. So you're going to have a few that don't really pan out. Yeah, you definitely have a few dogs. No doubt. Yeah. I, for me, and I apologize, I screwed up. I was supposed to send Nathan this a picture of this. You guys remember the snag-proof leech? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Steve, you I don't remember? I don't remember that. On it in, a, in a pond in Ohio. He loved them. That wow. was his that was his go-to lure. I'm like, there's zero action on that thing. He goes, but it's a leech. It's like the top thing for, for you know, food for bass or like one of the sources. I He loved it. It had a frog hook. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It doubled. So it was, in it. Yeah, it had a permanent bend in it that bend. looked like undulation. So when you looked at it in the package, you're like, ooh, uh-uh. Yeah. uh-uh. <laughs> it was just like that with a frog hook in it. And then I could only imagine that it would just do this in the water. It did, and he caught him on. I couldn't believe it, man. He might even outfish us that day. It was black. I don't uh, know. That hurt me, though. None of this matters. <laughs> <laughs> it's all nonsense. It's ridiculous. <laughs> What do you got for us, Steve? Come on, what do you got? I don't know. Let's. What about that bud? The The Budweiser can crankbait. No, hold on. (laughs) uh, Have you got that one? (laughs) Of course. I I remember Dad having one. I never owned one myself, but yeah, I remember throwing it out there. It didn't do a whole lot. I've actually heard of guys catching them on it. There you go. There it is, and it's got this. uh, And and you got a lot of JDM copycats, not in Budweiser cans, clearly, but. The um, like there's a jackal bunny, it's called, yep. and supposedly the concept was behind it was that blade hitting that metal can, so it makes a so it's kind of like a wake bait, if you will, Steve. But there's a lot of guys that love it. Look, the hook's been out, oh, so that somebody, pain, somebody a caught a good one on it. Is that a Hildenbrand? Is that a- <laughs> what happens to me? This buzz for you. There's actually a club in Japan. That's all they fish is the beer can bait. Stop lying. Really? Wow. A hundred percent. Yeah. I've heard of them well, on it, but it didn't do much for me. Certainly from a tournament standpoint, it's not on the short list. No. And you, and, yeah. It's called the head and big bud right there on the, the lip head mm-hmm. and big bud. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. This one doesn't have a name on it. There's not really a manufacturer, but you know, I'm not sure what it's <laughs> okay. called, but there, I have that one. Is that Oscar Meyer? Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. I think it is. Oscar Meyer. For the uh, for the iTunes listeners, uh, BTC, why don't you describe that bait for us? Um, it... <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Thank you for keeping me on topic. It, uh, it kind of looks like like a sausage with a like like a mushroom type of a head on it, like uh, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Awful. Yes, it is awful. Uh, Terry? Another one. Um, hey, uh, Nathan, cue up the 1940s stuff, and we can, you know, throw out some old things to, to show you that this stuff is not new. These mistakes that they're making in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s are not new. Um, Nathan there? Yeah. There we go. Okay, so we've got we've got the quiver lure. It's mm-hmm. this is night. Every one of these is from 1940 magazines. Um, and this lure here has a uh, metal rod in it that's been polished and it quivers when you're pulling this plug through the water. Of course, it looks like a, a head and river runt and uh, just the shape of it's probably going to sell something. Um, go to the next one, Nathan. And here's one that bleeds. Um, you bring it through the water and it releases a red dye that makes the lure look like the it's bleeding. And that, of course, is going to attract fish. Wow. Next. Is that a lure you only use once a month? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and this one here is the very first motor-powered lure. And again... Uh, we're talking, this one here is actually from 1961, and uh, it's got a motor in it. Uh, you put batteries in it and send it on its way. And uh, next one. 
<laughs> and then we've got this one here that's luminescent. And I've heard different stories. The body is luminescent, and when the spinner goes around the body, it makes it appear as if it's flashing. Okay? So mm -hmm. the, the spinner actually creates a shadow around it, you know, every time it rotates. And I've heard uh, rumors that this was actually painted with uh, uranium-based paint. So that would uh, catch the heck out of some trout. <laughs> I see Steve down there actually looking at it real intently. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> read some of this stuff. It's. I'll, I'll send it to you, Steve. They're they're interesting to read. Results hey, guaranteed. Guaranteed. What exactly, what exactly is a come on signal? It's a good I'm question. Just I'm just reading it. it I know. It's like keeps blinking a come on signal. Like come on, fish by me. I'm blinking. Radio yeah, Girl it, Fishing Edition. Very good. This day. is this was from 1946. And then I've got a, a last one. Um the neon firefly. This actually had neon gas in it. Um oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, For real? isn't that crazy? Oh, yeah. Yep, no batteries, no wires, no electricity. The only bait using neon. The slightest tipping, spinning, or jerking movement caused the firefly to give a bright, lifelike glow, irresistible to any game fish, a fine daytime lure, and unbeatable for fishing in deep waters or after dark when other baits will fail. Order direct, $1.25 postpaid. St. <laughs> Croix. Well, that was a lot of money back then. Yeah, and they failed so much. <laughs> it was a ton of money in 1940. How about I that? Yeah, was. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Solid 25. Exactly. Yeah, so that's just, you know, that, this is where we <clears throat> came from in the uh, dud lure, you know, category. But you so. see the themes, right? Motorized, blinking, mm -hmm. lights. And then, you know, you look at the, those were the precursors to the moto chug the yeah. laser lure right yep. and so mm -hmm. people were trying you know flashing and and and, and motorized and then you you, you know you, you've got the sound stuff that was the next generation right of loser lures if you will interesting yes. <laughs> yeah that, that <laughs> and, but that's what that's my, what I, boggles my I, mind I, is that they made these mistakes in the in the 40s 50s and 60s and yet we still make these mistakes Right. This one, this one blew my mind. Let's talk about the sound category next. All right. I, I, I saw this at a flea market and I just had to have it. It was in a nondescript box. It came in this box and I wrote on it, worst lure ever. So this box is nothing. It's sitting on a flea market table. I go, what's in the box? I got to know what's in the box. So here it is. Who has heard of this one? Sound bite. Lure Electronics, oh. Fish Like the Pros. It is two <laughs> legends of the game. Nixon. This is the, the VHS tape, and it was a striking lure company with the sound bite advantage. Gives you a little bit of information on the back there, but this is what blew my mind. Here's the lure. So it comes in this beautiful case, right? They got a couple things right. I'm missing a couple parts, by the way. So it's beautiful. It's a beautiful red velvet interior. It's a, it's a round rubber skirt, right? You've got these two power packs, and then you've got a jig-like lure. Let me take it out of the package here. I'll show you guys the bait. But this, it, it blew my mind the next thing. So check that monstrosity out, right? And then this is the instruction I started reading the instructions like I'm, I'm I wanted to actually try to throw it, see if I catch a fish on it. I was so confused. I don't even know if I would know how to rig it. Unbelievable, man. No wonder it didn't succeed. I, I, if you cannot hear your transmitter when you test it, check and make sure you've located and moistened both on off contact simultaneously. Check the power cap. Check the speaker gill. You got to make sure it, it, it's unbelievable. What do you guys think of that one? <laughs> Winner. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I know, but there's more. It came there's with some incredible Strike King offers. Let's go through them. I mean, uh, one it, pile of shit, get two more free? 100%. It's extra value. So if you weren't happy with your original purchase, 
look at all these things you could buy. Like, all right, the spin dance was a spinner bait. Pretty good. I like that. You could get bass uh, tees with the shirt, with buttons, Brian. You get your see what the pros do, the glasses. You get more DVDs. You get the Porco. You get the Bohog Frog. I mean, all these offers inside that one thing. How about that? That's pretty good. Oh. Even if the bait sucked. What do you guys think of that bait, though? Had you ever heard of that? Anybody? <laughs> Matt? No, I want it. Terry? Like, that's part of history. Yeah. <laughs> Terry? Absolutely. Have you ever seen it? No, that belongs in the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame. So? <laughs> yeah, that's freaking cool, dude. Like, that's really Do they cool. have a category for that, Matt? Uh, no, nah, not, not like in the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame, a lure category. No, it's just like people mainly, I think. Right. I mm. mean, the eight times, I mean, I've been there a bunch. There might be, I don't think there's like a Hall of Fame lure category. There's lure makers in it, but not Hall, Hall of Shame. Fame lures. That would be yeah, an interesting, I'll... that might be an interesting addition. I agree. I, How does a lure I'd, make I'd it? head right for it. <laughs> oh, and I got a letter from Bill Dance, by the way. It this came with a, a Bill Dance letter? It came with a Bill Dancer. Read it's, that. It Read signed, that opening paragraph. Signed, it was signed by Bill Dance. Dear friend, you and I share a love of fishing, and now we share a secret. Sound bite lure <laughs> electronics. Your new talking jig and onliner will literally have the fish looking for your favorite lures. Catch your limit of largemouth bass, pike, walleye, smallmouth bass, catfish, trout, you name it. And they're just as effective in salt water as in fresh. I, I, there you go. That's the opening paragraph. Wow. It's amazing, dude. It is. What's the last paragraph? Like, how does he close it? Because it's got to be right, a let's... real zinger. Okay, in closing. In closing. Like, there's got to be some, like, deal about, like, you know, ho hope your thumbs are ready for this. Right. <laughs> it says, fishing's... <laughs> Fishing has never been easier or more enjoyable. Now you don't have to look for the fish. They look for you. Wow. Thank you for ordering your new Sound Bites electronics package. That's Sincerely, Bill Dance. Hold on. P.S. Your, your new on lighter is a totally new concept in fishing. Tied onto your line and instantly you've turned good lures into great lures. Makes bass fishing twice as effective, too. And Any idea a, what it costs? It's well, a hydrowave lure. <laughs> it is. It's true. Exactly. This, this, this might have been the hydrowave lure. Steve? What, what, are, the, what are the sounds? I mean, do we have options? Or just... I, no, <laughs> or there's just... only one. There's only one. But Can we get a close-up to... of that again full screen? What, I don't feel like we got a really like? good enough look to it. You want to see just the jig? Yeah, I want to see all the components it. that it came with. Okay, here we go. What did one it more cost? Time. I don't remember, but it was cheap enough for me to buy it. It is missing two parts. Oh, so the guy man. that kept those two parts must have really liked them. What are those two parts? Do you know? I'd have to read through the instruction, and my mind was so numb. I was trying to read it through the show, before the show, and I'm like, I can't I can't digest it all. It, it it's was just a jig. A, made in China. Oh, yeah, I think that. these, the, oh, sorry, <clears throat> these you tied in front of your lure. So you you use your favorite lure, but this thing goes in front of the lure to emit a sound. U.S. Oh, wow. patent number uh -oh. five million four hundred eighty five six hundred ninety seven, and other patents pending. Uh -oh. well, we just lost one of those too. Well, there was a fish below my desk, and you know, you saw it. <laughs> <immediately attacked. laughs> went running for it. I can't. I mean, I don't want to say it, but I'm kind of feeling something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh god. That might uh, be a winner, uh, Epic Eric. I, I'm hooked, man. I I this one blew my mind. It blew my mind. It really That's did. Outstanding. I was just rummaging through. I forgot I had it. I literally reorganized a lot of my crankbait boxes, all these Plano boxes with my balsas back here. And hidden in the back was this box. And I'm like, what is this box? Because I was looking for a box of Mike E. Step plugs, Terry. For those of you guys, real quick plug for Terry. If you haven't seen it, watch the YouTube video. 
that Bass Fishing Archives put out on Mikey Step and his balsa crankbaits. Uh, they will not be on the worst uh, lures in bass fishing history. Amazing. Anyway, and I found this box. That's how it came to be. So, Terry, thank you. We would have never seen this tonight if you didn't do that video. Timely. Timely. It was meant to be. Destiny. Bass awesome. Fishing Destiny. So Glad I can know. Livingston ripped them off. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I saw Bill dance on there. <laughs> there's, there's another dance bait out there that was uh, mm. a big dud in the tournament crowd. It probably caught a fish, but the uh, the dance is eel. <laughs> I think I sent a picture that, of that. Oh, you got one in person there. <laughs> oh yeah, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna, why, I'm gonna why cut why this open. It an eel, it's it's a tadpole. I'm cutting this it thing is. open right now. Seriously. Just I got I got This is a fresh. I'm doing this for the show, <laughs> and I want to see the action on this thing. Oh, no. There, that thing was worth at least $9. I, they re released <laughs> it like 10 years ago. There, there's yeah. guys that were trying to buy them up at one point. I don't know what they're doing with them, but, but what are they doing with them? Somewhere. <laughs> what was the knock on it? That it looked dumb or that it didn't run? It, it, just, it didn't catch fish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I he saw Bill fish. Dance catch a bunch of fish on TV <laughs> with it. Where did he fish it? Was it like a private pond or something? All right. Yeah, he's fishing private deal. Pink lure out there, and it would catch him there. <laughs> okay. okay. It's kind of flaccid. Okay. okay. No. Well, I could boil that tail, make it softer. I don't know, man. I mean, Steve, let's let's talk about the lip angle. Is that correct for a crankbait? It doesn't look all that bad. I, I, from what I remember, it swam decent. It's just a big, wide... But but I just don't remember ever catching a fish on it. I just I'm sure I I just, I'm, I'm, I'm literally going to go shoot a video this 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 summer somewhere, like and take all these worst lures out. So it's got to be a frog bite. So I can throw the moto jug. I think I could crank this along maybe a, a grass edge and try to catch one on a river. I'm totally doing that, and I'm going to bring the companion power pack out, the Sonic one, the little fishy. <laughs> That's going in the game. <laughs> and then I am going to rip this trap out of the grass because I think this is the worst trap style bait ever made. Steve, you might know this one. MH1. Does anybody remember that one? Looks like a no, bogus. It looks like a man's bait. Yeah. It says yeah. the crankbait of the future is here. <laughs> this revolutionary MH1 weedless Oop. is one of the most versatile lures ever made. It what? can be fished at least five different ways you can crank it you can flip it you can skip it you can jig it you can crawl it tuning instructions is there a hook on I mean, it yeah let me show you i'm gonna take it out is that sean it. grigsby that's i see that mustache there it is man oh wow oh, God. Single hook. it is not so the hook is a little suspect it's a little thin but you know what <laughs> looks I like mean, a mustache worm hook. It's, it's not too sharp it's got this uh <laughs> Not like weed sharp. whacker, weed that helps part it. to it, right? Yeah, that, that keeps it from getting snagged as much, eh? There is the, the, a little bit hook. of a rattle in it. And the guy on this this picture, if you could, if the camera will focus, it is not Shaw Grigsby, I don't think. It is Ron Shuffield. No Ron way. Shuffield. <laughs> Three time winner, patent pending. And it was Marble Hail Inc. or Marble Hall. H A W L L Phoenix Arizona, that's the lure, the M eight or the M M M H one, M H one. I'll catch the same fish three times. There so, it is, man. So yeah, the tail design on that. They used to put that on like a jerk bait, and uh, we yeah. had some salt fish on it. I just I can't remember what they called it, but but well, yeah, you know, man's it and it it made a I mean it made it a faster action waking it. Faster than a red fin, so we used it for stripers for a while. It was oh wow, baller bait. Was, but, was it the pogo shad? One good day on it for sure. Was it man's? the man's pogo pogo pogo, pogo minnow? Pogo yeah. minnow. Hold on, have you got one? I, we call some right, fish on do. that once. <laughs> yeah, I've got them. I like use them. The pogo <laughs> shad's huge on the Potomac River. Yeah, I got. Oh, really? Really? I learned about it from Travis and Smallmouth Crush. <laughs> Travis? What, the Pogo Shed? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he learned that from Oh, there was a couple of them, yes. But, but the one I remember was a little jerk bait about that long that had that same type tail on the back. And it just made it made it a faster weight bait. Stripers loved it on Martin at one point. 
That's really interesting, Steve, that you threw the pogo wake. The pogo minnow. I don't, I don't, yeah, I think it was a pogo minnow is what it was called. But yeah, yeah so the, ta- the, the tail, the tail's not new because that's the man's tail, right? So, and yeah, you can see the, the similarity, tail. right, to the MH1. Who did it first? I guess the MH1. <laughs> so that would cause that to be pretty wide, wild one. Interesting. I'm sure, yes. <laughs> Very cool. But before we get off of the Bill Dance train, uh, I think we've all at one point thrown the long arm spinner bait or uh, buzz bait. That's Remember the buzz bait like, that was that was eighteen that inches. Booyah, right? Had, like an yeah, an eighteen or a twenty two inch shaft on the buzz yeah, bait. I and remember that. You could not cast the thing to save your life. Nope. It, I, I mean, it just it was literally worry. like uh, casting piano having... wire. <laughs> I never caught a fish on it, but I do remember I buying one. There you go, Steve. Let, let me know if you want me to send you one down. I got I'm you, man. I'm, I'm good. I got some swim baits that look way better now. <laughs> but but th- there's Wait. an old chromie. There's an old chromie oh, of the yeah, pogo. Yes, that's ready. That's ready for paint. Right ready there. for paint if you need it. That works. Would that not be oh, a good yeah. heron bait, Eric? Like uh, keeping you know it what? chrome and throwing it in on the in the Carolinas, like over those I, those cane piles. I think maybe based on the way Steve was fishing it, yeah. It might have worked. I'm, that's what I said. I had one good day. It wasn't even I might day. slide into your DMs after this show, it. Epic Eric. <laughs> I, I just happened to have two. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then one ready for repaint and then a bunch of small ones. So, you know, slide into that DM, brother. Oh, and a bunch of bone ones because you know the bone plastic's good. Mm. Those are the smaller size. <laughs> I, I just okay. saw a. Uh... Oh, dude, I need to get in there. <laughs> oh, there's some good stuff. <laughs> there's good some dogs the too, <laughs> for sure. I mean, as evidenced by the show and tell. I yeah, have the it. Bone ones, man. <laughs> I can find it. So, S- Steve, Steve on the message board said uh, Strike King's Rocket Shad offered that up as Fugazi. Ooh. And I got a problem with that. The you rocket guys familiar shed. with the rocket oh, shed? The, the, the little yeah. one? It's like a tail oh, it With the yeah. two hooks on it? Yeah. That catches them. That catches them. You missed it, Steve. I missed it, totally. Steve. <laughs> Other Steve. Somebody may have, yeah. Somebody may have told me so, that I just laughed it off. <laughs> no. So, Steve Kennedy, what, yeah. what bait would you say was the worst bait that you spent too much time messing with? Mm, great question. <laughs> That is interesting. I mean, I played around with all the duck lures, but <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I had some big giant swim baits at one point, and I couldn't find them. I had a, I don't know, a 16, 18 inch swim bait that I bought out in oh, California. Holy, holy I moly! Couldn't even throw it, but, but I, it's not here. I couldn't find it. I dug for an hour or two looking for it, so I don't know where it went. But, Steve, I'll send you this down. You, you don't, stop looking for it. You just, it's yours, man. Whatever you need. Uh, that didn't look bad. What, <laughs> what was it? <laughs> That's a DRT ghost. <laughs> but no, I mean, did you did you get my picture of the the bass with the duck? <laughs> Let's go down that route for a little while. Go I'd ahead. Like yeah, I did. That, you man. sent them to me, and not Nathan. <laughs> So, yeah, I actually caught a bass out in, uh, where were we? Old Hickory. I won a PAA tournament throwing my that Bass Pro Shop swim bait. And, uh, but, yeah, I oh. caught a fish that had a duck hanging out of his throat. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, just playing around, I think I produced the, the worst bait ever. <laughs> Listen. I'm not kidding, guys. So I was doing the all the I was the head media guy for the PAA when this went down. Oh my god! Listen, I was doing media for PAA when this went down, and Steve that went down, and the duck was sticking out of his throat. And the next morning, I'm sitting there at takeoff, shooting photos, writing articles. That bait was legitimately. I am not kidding. I cannot stress this serious enough. Tied on his rod on the front deck, leading a tournament, and he had that rubber ducky tied on on the front deck and actually threw it in the PAA event that he won the next day. I, I, I freaking love too, it. But, 
my day didn't go wow. as well as I hope. I still won, but yeah, I was hoping I could have <laughs> a bunch. It just didn't go down that way. But oh yeah, my gosh, maybe that time. duck was the attractor. Like you brought the big fish out of the weeds, and then you know you threw the good stuff. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> But yeah, I think that was an epic fail there. It was fun though. There you go. You got it. What? Whoa. Holy what? crap! That's his head. A duck head. Holy shit! That's wow. like a baby mallard head. So it's not a little bitty fuzzy one. It's a mid-sized baby duck. So <laughs> big enough oh, to man. get it all the way down. But yeah, there's they're savages. Down. I mean, yeah, you got the savage. Where are we? Mm -hmm. I got a savage. Savage. Yeah, and then. Weston makes a, a diving duck. Where are we? Oh, I got that Weston that. somewhere. Yeah. Look at that thing. I think that would work great. In a that would work. I, I have that here somewhere. <laughs> hey, I've definitely seen there them in before. So, uh, but yeah, that number really? might actually oh, yeah. work. <laughs> Eat coots. Oh, I got no. one more here. This one a guy sent to me. Y'all talking about fly time. Somewhere. Somewhere what in there. What the hell? Somewhere. <laughs> Looks like something my dog would cough up. So yeah, uh -huh. there's a hook in there. I can't remember who said it to me, but, but it's been sitting on my desk ever since. <laughs> I love the dog. Oh my god. <laughs> that looks like it was tied in prison. <laughs> A swivel on there. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> perfect. I see the hook. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That that is <laughs> by SK. <laughs> but I can't remember who did it. <laughs> I can't recover from that. But thank you, whoever it was. I love it. <laughs> I, I I would like to thank that person as well. That's amazing. <laughs> that's a that's a duck, I'm coming huh? unglued. All right, I'm sorry. That's awesome. Woo! That was a good one, man. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, who's next? Oh, oh. I got a few more, but who's next? <laughs> Terry. Uh, how about the uh, the hover lure? Oh, Go for it. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matt, you know what the That's hover lure is? number one right there. Oh, yeah. Yep. No, I had that as the grand, I had that as the grand finale. Uh, we all had the hover lure? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yes, there it is. We, right got a, we got a commercial. <laughs> we got a commercial. <laughs> yeah. Strike. Incredible, isn't it? Just look at the way those big bass go for that lucky lure. A lure unlike any other. Because you don't fish underwater, you fish above water. Introducing <laughs> the one and only Hover Lure, king of bass. Looks like a dragonfly, works like a charm. And since dragonflies hover above the water, that's what the patented Hover Lure is designed to do. Right over all those hard to work hot spots. Just watch <laughs> how the big bass are drawn to the irresistible Hover Lure. Call now to order your Hover Lure bass fishing system and check out all you'll get. The unique Hover Lure floating pad, three Hover Lure bodies, six die cut wing sets, a generous supply of tubes, weights, multicolor eyes, and custom band eagle claw hooks. Order now and you'll also receive this Rubbermaid Action Packer Organizer. Plus, as an added bonus, six extra Hover Lure wing sets. Wow. Yeah. 19 dollars for the price of one lucky crap. You get all that? Yeah, exactly. Imagine, I mean, it, it just, it looks like, you know, you have to cob it all together for one, and then the fish eats it, and what happens to all Not the parts? All. There, there's a little bitty hook up in the air. Yeah. How do you, how do you cast how do, that? How do you cast it? That's what I want to know. Like a potato chip? <laughs> the most valuable thing there is is if there was, like, an, a list, an email list, you know, of the people that actually bought that. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can sell them oh, yeah. anything. They, they still have a website. I mean, no way. They do. What? I, I, yes, I don't know if they're still selling them. I don't know. I look at how I was on it today. Up. Hey, Steve, I was on it today. Well, they are not still selling that. Yeah. yeah, they are. You can find them all over eBay. I think they're selling them mainly off of eBay. 
That's unbelievable. I mean, it obviously gets bent. I just saw it happen, but but I think it's more than the fly <laughs> up above it. What in the heck? Yeah. Holy moly. That's a gem. They, they eat dragonflies. I mean, dragonflies. Yeah. Oh, for sure. They were talking about fly tying earlier. I heard some of that, but yeah, they're. Uh, mm-hmm. We used to actually, when I had the bait company, we would we had a sculpin or a goby that we had that had two, you know, big flat fins that would come off the sides as pectoral fins. And we had a guy at Alan Henry that would order <clears throat> hundreds in a smoke with a blue pearlescence in it that looked so it looked like a blue dragonfly. And he he said that that's exactly when he would you know, when he would was buying those, they were eating dragonflies. Hmm. I mean, he, he matching the hatch a thousand of the damn things from us, so they must have worked. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, we used to do that back in the day. Um, you know, the dragonflies are usually brown, blue, or red. Yeah, and um, see blue what red. see what color the dragonflies were that day. That the bass were smashing in the pads, and then throw a worm that was close to that. And uh, I just got a message from Lee Livesey who says, I smashed on the helicopter lure you, uh, blank, blank, blank. <laughs> Lee says he called him. Uh, <clears throat> I got a oh, premium geez. bait that was Wally chugged GPA one of my water. Most... What's that? I said, Wally chugged GPA water. Yeah. L- log story there. Okay. So, so premium company. One of my favorites for soft plastics. They came onto the scene in a wild way. Like, w- first swim bait probably that I ever threw, Potomac River, fishing with Brennan Bosley. Top 150, I think it was. Reaction Innovations. Skinny Dipper. And it, they were eating it like they'd never seen a swim bait before. Disco Violet. I just, it was crazy. So when they released the crankbait, I'm going, it's got to be good. The Reaction Innovations Method Crank. I couldn't get it to swim right. And I bought like six of them. Yes. I love that thing. I had two and broke both of them. You do not love that thing. I'll sell you all three. I'll sell you all six. Make an offer. I have two or three of them. (laughs) I've never caught them. Do they work for you, Steve? I, I, I don't remember throwing it much, but I have a couple. Matt, you want them? Yeah, let's do some horse trading. Okay, we'll figure out. All right, All right cool. I, I, I got, got some turtleback here. worms headed your way. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've always wanted. I probably at least have. I don't have the turtleback gulp though. I might have had the turtleback power one. Didn't they make a power bait one too? I think so. They they went they, they went, went with all the shapes in gulp for a while there. Yeah, terrible, terrible. Anyway, that's a story of it had to look it looked good and I'm going, they make great stuff. It's gotta be good. Nope. In my view. Has anyone seen the um oh shit. That spinner bait with the ball on it, knuckleball? Knuckleball. Yeah, that, Yo Zuri, Bobby Lane was all about that. Did anybody catch him on the knuckleball? Nope. I don't know that one. They were, they, they were in the clearance bin at Dick's for like $2.99. And I was thinking about like they were short arm. So getting and yeah. making a spinner bait out of it. But I couldn't, the, the way it was attached, it, it just wouldn't work. I mean, you basically yeah, fish it like a swim jig. Is that what it was supposed to be? It's basically a swim jig with the ball. And then it like the ball like oscillated randomly, which gave it erratic action. I mean, that was oh, pretty that was interesting. Amazing. Do you ever throw you don't remember that, Steve? You don't remember that? I don't Steve? remember that one. I at mean, all. it's like re- it's down. very recent. I don't know if we can you can you could just do that and it'll pull up. Yeah, it's still. It, I mean, it's still like I just you can still find those things on I the shelf. You can buy it, right? I have them over yeah. there somewhere. Didn't know what to do with it, <laughs> or everybody else did. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. Oh. I mean, a swim jig so damn good. I don't know. Dang, knuckleball, good That's one. Pretty though. terrible. I got one, and and we talked a little bit about PAA. It kind of became famous in the PAA on Tawakini. Allegedly, Keith Combs caught him on the uh, – and then this was mentioned in the comments on Instagram. <laughs> and I sent the picture to Nathan, and he's got it, that power tackle lateral perch. Oh, oh yes. I've been thing. waiting for this. Lateral perch? Yeah. Yeah. Like the, uh, so, the Big Bite Bates one? No, no. Oh, so this oh was, with the jig. 
the gym. Yeah, this was supposed to be like the end all be all to punching, flipping grass, flipping yeah. mats, skipping docks, bed fishing. That's not it. No. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. We got have it. A, nope. It. Nope. Not that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. <laughs> that's all you said. <laughs> oh, that's all I sent. I didn't send the last one. Oh, then. I think Epic Eric might save the day. He might have one, but it was weighted. It had a, a soft plastic head, kind of like the old Castaic swim baits did. The mm -hmm. first kind of of those, and then you had the body that attached to it, and it looked just like a bluegill. But I mean, all it did was twist your line and lay on the bottom. <laughs> I don't know. There it is, right there. Yep. No, wow. Tackle tour. Co Keith Combs was like all about it for a couple years. I mean, I bought probably two hundred dollars <laughs> worth of them. Yeah. Oh cool. God! Did it not swing? Keith Combs owes you. <laughs> no, it doesn't do anything. I, I mean, nothing. And then it like went away. Like it was very hard to get for about a year. Like it was sold out everywhere. Like you would go into tackle stores and ask if they had the lateral perch, and I would get the green pumpkin and the bluegill ones. I, I heard you found it. No one gonna dig anymore. Did you catch them on it? No, I never caught a fish on it. That's so crazy. Have that you sucks. caught a fish on it, Epic Eric? I've never thrown it. I bought, it I looks bought a good. couple. They've been sitting back there forever. It looks so it looks, good. It looks realistic. It does. I like it. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about using it for a bed and bait. It, I it, remember it, seeing that, and I whatever they wrote, they had me right there, Matt. And I didn't oh, pull yeah, the trigger dude. on it, thank God, because I was thinking, oh, man, yeah, that, oh, yeah, yeah. And that, and it just, oh, shit, yeah. Uh uh it, wasn't, mm -hmm. it was all lies, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was I'm right sure there, dude. I remember going money. down that, like, ooh, that could be it. That got me for more than a few, <laughs> but not that. <laughs> it's funny, uh, like, Dance's Zeal gets, gets a lot of hate. You know, but he also had dances. He had dances crawl too. That's right. It just doesn't. It, it, I guess it didn't get out there. Uh, kind of flew under the radar. Yeah. I never had one. I had the eel, and I bought a dances eel like ten years ago or something. They came back. They tried to re-release it, but uh, dances crawl. How about this guy taking on Rapala? Who that? The, the oh. sneaky snake. Harold Inslee. Harold Inslee. Sneaky snake is better than Rapala. Wow. Patented design. Look at that, man. That's 25 what you... years. I don't know, man. What What is this? Where'd it come from? <laughs> That's got to be the 60s. It's so, I mean, his, on the his, wall over Harold there. Inslee had the... He had the first uh, fishing show on TV syndicated yep. in the late late 40s and early 50s. He won the World Series of Sport Fishing in 1961. Here um, we go. He was a big dude. Dude, man. Rapala oh. came to the U.S. in 59, and by 61, 62, was, everybody was knocking it off. So it's probably yeah. in that 63, 64 time frame. Here are the That's directions. Crazy. This is the important part. Using a spin or casting rod, cast the sneaky snake, jiggle it two or three times. This will give the appearance of a crippled or injured lizard or snake. Does that look <laughs> like a lizard to you? Anyway, then reel in slowly and sneaky snake will automatically retrieve in a snake-like motion, leaving a natural wake. Work out your own technique, BTC. Literally, that's what it says. <laughs> Work out your own BTC technique. <laughs> it says if necessary, you could adjust the flow of the lure by bending the front eye loop either left or right. You could sneaky snake right into a dock system and catch yourself a limit. How about that's that? That's amazing. Man? Better than Rapala. That's pretty bold. Uh, yeah, I like the I like their 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 angle. There's kind of like kind of like a rap battle, you know. They're like up and comer. They they just pick out who's hot yeah. and take a shot at them. Yeah, call them out. Try to get their name out yep. there. By the way, folks, we have a we have breaking news. We have another Ken Duke update. Ken out on the town. Where's no. Ken at now? <laughs> so 
<laughs> but you gotta he, love it. He says Nathan, he's got bad just, knees, but I don't know. Nathan, that's awesome. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, what was I, the I vampire know. lure for men's? The vampire lure. Who remembers that one? What? Terry. All right. It had that crazy spinner, like a V. It was a man oh. spinner bait. A man's a vampire. He blade. The yeah. D blade was one, and then there was that wiggly blade, right? That had all those like oh yeah, the undulating, split I the un undulator or I something. Oh, I mean, uh, like, I how do you beat a regular great spinner bait? And they came out with that vampire and that undulator. I'm like, what is that stuff? Yeah, but then you have the Bass Pro Shops Tornado. I was just gonna say that. Yep. Uh, What's the guy's and, name? They, they caught uh, him on that. Somebody they did Eugene Shoestring de Bois. That's right. Good one. And he, and he was like, wow. smile went this way and his hat went that way. It was, I <laughs> stared at that picture forever. I'm like, how is he the head and the hat? It freaked me out. But that thing but yes. has a cult following and it catches fish. It does. Yeah. People pay 25 to 50 bucks for one on, on eBay nowadays. They really? can't they probably also the bought the hover glory. I probably have one of those mm. somewhere stashed too. Or five. <laughs> so, I think, so I think they were part, part of like looking lure. Can we talk about that one? Which one? The, the, the jerkbait looking lure you had just a minute ago. Did did Kevin really catch him on that wild shiner back in the day? Matt, you might know. <laughs> the the, the Kevin, original wild shiner jerkbaits. Oh, because well, I mean, I know in when I mean and Terry probably knows too, but I know in that 05 classic in Pittsburgh, he was throwing an OG rogue. He's throwing a rogue, but I can't. Right. But I, I, yeah, I can't. I can't remember a tournament where I mean, the wild was, shiner. Was the jerk bait man, and everything yeah. was wild shiner, wild shiner. I'm just. Well, I heard that he was actually throwing a pointer seventy eight. Are you thinking about that? Uh, well, at at Three Rivers, he was throwing a rogue. A rogue. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but there was one either on Erie or uh, one of those lakes up there where he was throwing a pointer seventy eight. And then right after that came out with a jerk bait that looked like a pointer 78. But yeah, that wild shiner, the original ones looked so bad to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Kind of like a red fin. <laughs> yeah. I just I never bought in. I have no idea. They looked awful. It was <laughs> since we're on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Good one. Man. What what have we got? That's, that's a red fin. Red fin. That is a an original. Look at that. A, that is an OG oh, red fin. Oh. That, that that's, is OG. That's nineteen sixty eight to uh, like seventy two or seventy three. They had that in that packaging. It just self destructed on us. The yep. Packaging. Yeah, yeah. I've caught a bunch of stripers on them. Caught a few bass, but, but they're a heck of a striper bait. They wake well. They Remember the rippling red bait. fin? Yep. Adam. Adam. So what have we missed? Oh gosh. I, I got all that technology one. and his stupid Senko catches them. I got one. <laughs> Look at that. Nemo. <laughs> Nemo. <laughs> with a hook in it. I don't know. The he's took. But as far as novelty baits, I thought this one was pretty cool. We were uh we were at ICAST one year. And I took my son in, and uh, Weston hooked my son up. But anyway, I believe I Oh, that is a Weston. That's uh, a Weston make. Oh, that's cool. It is, yes. Pretty sure. It... But... Anyway, cool bait. That's crazy. A big old pipe probably eat that. <laughs> I believe I get a bite on that one. But... A grouper. We have, yeah, <laughs> we go. haven't really talked about the uh, the ICAST Best of Show Award winners that might slide into some of these categories too. <laughs> like, like I mean, we're an, you know we're an hour and eleven minutes in, and we haven't talked about any of the lunker hunt shapes or perhaps the oh, Rocky yeah. Brook the Rocky Brook sinkers. I'm sure you remember the the. I mean, I think they're still around, but they're basically oh, just yeah. the, the or the sinker. the machine gun rod uh, handle. Oh yeah, I remember oh, yeah. that one. That one was wild. It's still, a, they're still one? selling it. Oh, yeah, it's got like an oozy freaking grip. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I've got. I sent a picture of the Rocky Brooks. 
Yeah, there yes. they are. They're literally I have them uh, somewhere. River rocks with a swivel in them, and it's a more natural way to drop shot. Yeah. <laughs> that was best of show. That was a bet. That was a best of show award winner, I do believe. And they're Come still, on, you know, Matt. they're still for sale. They had like sponsors. I think Charlie Evans had a uh, Rocky Brook Sinkers wrap for a number of years, or was the title sponsor for him on the FLW <clears throat> tour. Title wow. sponsor? Yeah. I, I, wow. I miss that wow. one. I mean, they're only a stone's throw away from my house. I could have got them to sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. I may have to make some of those up before we go north again. <laughs> yeah, it's that ultra natural. And then the other one that I had. Uh, a they, man they that fishes them. in a glass bottom boat should not throw Rocky Hop sinkers. <laughs> Rocky Brook. But uh, when I was in college, they kind of sponsored some of the collegiate fishing. And it's that worm that keeps getting popped up, and it it, it was called uh, snap tail lures. Mm -hmm. And so the That's best way, it. To, there it is. So the best way to describe this is, you know, the people who have like the gauges in their ears, and then they pop them out, and they just got the earlobe that's flopping there. Well, that yeah. was the back of the worm, and then it came with different colored snap uh, oval shapes. No. So you know, it would have chartreuse, <laughs> orange, red, blue. So whatever color no. you wanted, the tail of the worm, you would click it into the plastic and it was like and an then cast it right off <laughs> and then you would cast it so you would get the the snap tail worm and then you get a bunch of different snaps in a ziploc that came with it so you could change the the color of the snap as you fished wow. that was back around 2009 2010 crazy that's too much pot you know i mean that's i mean how else do you ever come up with these ideas too much what uh, pot Pot, yeah. <laughs> uh, Such a government employee. <laughs> um, blame I pot. got one called the Bass Raider. Bass Raider. The Bass Raider. This is 1981. Ooh. And this isn't just a lure, but it's a system. Oh. And uh, Nathan, can you bring up? There we go. 21st Century Tackle Company. This dude was a uh, computer guy back in the in the 70s and in, in, in the early 80s he quits his job and gets a patent and he's designed this computer module that goes into a plug a surface plug and here, here's the ad it's like 800 words uh number four font you can't read it unless you got a camera that you can take a picture of it um and Let's see what it says here. Uh, the company owner, Jack Murray of New Jersey, has been in communi oh, computer co communications for two decades while working on his kids' remote-controlled uh, toys. He has an epiphany to design a remote-controlled lure. So what he's done is he's got this lure that's got two props on it. The rod itself is the antenna, and the remote control is in the handle of the rod. Steve, there's uh, nothing that can go wrong here, is there? <laughs> <laughs> what in the hell? Yeah. It was, it's, it could be you, cool. <laughs> oh, it, yeah, it could be cool. But in 1981, they were selling this thing for $295. What? You, yes. That's, that's equivalent no. to like a grand now, right? That, that's a no for me. Yeah, so oh, it, 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 oh. you have to supply the reel, all right? So the rod, you buy the rod and the lure. You get one lure, uh, and then, you know, they have different bodies. So if you want to change lure colors, you have to change the, the body around the controlling module. Uh, each lure's got two props. Uh, one is for... Uh, forward motion and the other one is for direction and uh yeah i just can't think of so, anything that would wait, ever so go wrong with that if they're schooling you literally drive your lure out to the to school, the school. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah or you could drive your lure <laughs> under the overhanging <laughs> or, or the dock oh yeah wow yeah or you can just run so you just circles drive it but but just think about it though you're getting bit in free spool, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got probably it. not. No, I don't. 
probably don't have to worry about it, sir. <laughs> so this guy sold his retirement and went into business. I mean, he put forty-five thousand dollars of his own money, nineteen eighty-one dollars, into this 40, business. Forty thousand. Did he also get divorced and lose his family? Well, I would. Have been, I didn't get that far. <laughs> but yeah, I would. Yeah, the coolest it, shit around. Unbelievable. It was. Uh, mm. Yeah. So I I'd love to see a video of that. There's no video. There's actually uh, a bunch of uh -huh. newspaper write-ups about it at the time, nineteen eighty-one, eighty-two. And Nathan, I think we got another picture that actually from the uh, from the newspaper that I sent you. Oh. It it the lure does not look anything like it does in the ad. It, it looked like a spook. Yeah. It well, this one doesn't yeah. look like a spook. It looks yeah, like that, a torpedo. That's no, that's that's a different oh, no, one. It's a newspaper part. article. Those were terrible. That's not the it. Blinker, I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, no, there's it. Lulu. There's oh, Lulu. Oh. No, that's not it. This is another what? one. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. Oh. Hey. oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I guess you didn't get it. It is must it? have been I don't think we have one. that one. Did we get another cube? No. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So, I mean, we had. So, the blinker was made by Smithwick, and Lulu was made by, I don't know, that was 1975, but that was another self propelled lure. The uh, so if you drove that thing under itself? under a dock, like if you drove that thing under a dock with all the pilings and then it got smoked, now you've got a two hundred dollar lure attached to line. You gotta get it out around eight pilings or else the whole freaking dog and pony show's over. Exactly. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> driving. And, and they don't say how much the extra lures are. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Or if it dies, oh no, you can reel it in, but yeah, um, it, yeah, you reel it in, and, and supposedly it would work for 14 hours of normal fishing and eight hours of fishing it exclusively. Could you imagine having a guy on stage being like, dude, I was on the winning pattern, but my lure died? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wait, 1981, and he had eight hours of battery life? Yeah. That's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. That is. I don't buy it either. Buy it. Uh -uh. He ain't buying it. No. Nah, and they nah. were rechargeable. That was the, the another crazy thing, is it? Yeah. Recharge there weren't that many power. rechargeable batteries back then. Nuclear power. Yeah. Where are they yeah, now? I want to see that documentary on that guy. They're, yes. They're, yeah. they're using drones in salt water to take baits out there. It's, it's oh yeah. Yes, I saw that in California uh, three months ago. We were out there, and there was a dude that was drone fishing, and he would hook up a big piece of chunk bait, and he had just a giant spool of line, and he was at the end of this pier, and he would just it would it would go and it would go up, and then it yep. would just smoke the reel. I mean, we're talking wow. a, it, it would have to have been five hundred yards, like out of sight, and he's got a little camera, and he's watching it, and then. He would drop it, I mean, way out of sight, like out in the ocean off of the pier. And then here would come the drone, and he'd land it on the bench right next to him, and he'd tighten up his line, and he was fishing. And then yeah. he put it, a little bell on it in case he got a bite. Was, <laughs> it, I mean, so like I would say – a little light. <laughs> I'd say each time he did it, we probably he watched it for there. half an hour, and he did it twice. So he was he was 15 minutes for each setup to get it out there. Wow, oh, man, that's it was crazy. cool. That's very Did, cool. Yeah. I've seen some what are you doing in California? Cool. That's where my girlfriend's family lives. Oh, okay. So yeah, we were out, the there on, out there What's on the pier. With the worst lure in the world. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Curious hosts you are. Duck only. I want to see some of those, a uh, couple of those pictures that Nathan had up for Terry. Sure. Nathan, swing us back uh, through that little PowerPoint you were doing there. That was cool. Is Nathan still there? He went home. There we go. So that's the one we just covered. So there's the Chow Hound. That was developed oh. by Dr. Lauren Hill in the early, Lauren Hill, early the 90s. Guy? The ringworm guy? Lauren Hill developed uh, the color selector, Biosonics, and tree, a bunch of other stuff. He was Kenyon Wasn't Hill's he dad. Wasn't he the ringworm guy, too? Wasn't he he might have been the ringworm guy. guy. He might have been. Yeah, anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Anyway, uh, 
So this what is that? That a is a crankbait that's got a blade on the on the deep dive and bill. Is yep. that Japan? Bladed crank? Is that the first bladed crankbait? No, no the first bladed right? crankbait was made by Hedden in 1902. <laughs> Look at that, man. That's nuts, man. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> what was the concept? What does that say? I mean, why? Um, just flash. Well, let's see here. On... Yeah, is there an angler, anglerfish. I promise this. The Chow Hound crank spin is what it was also known as, and it was made by Anglers Pride, which was Crankbait Corporation. So you've what? got Tom Seward involved in that. Um, yeah, it's uh. It's an interesting bait. They go for about twenty twenty five dollars on eBay now. They've turned for into real? a yeah for real. They they've turned into a collector's deal. Wow. Yep. Did, it, did it catch a fish? I don't think it caught fish, Steve. It obviously it, it was only around for a couple of years, so yeah. you know, kind of like the color selector. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in my opinion, the only good thing color selector did is start making people throw pink or bubble gum. Uh -huh. Lure Lab says that's the worst drawing of a bass ever on that package. So maybe I was just saying it looks like ever, an Asian carp, doesn't it? That is the worst <laughs> bass illustration ever. I like the eyes. I, they look. Yeah, that takes, <laughs> looks like it, an Asian carp. A little, it look. It does. It looked a little sickly. That's why they it's got prophetic. It. It's like a frog. It, that, we were being uh, warned back in bass. 1981. Oh, All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is Fisherman Joe's Swim and Lure. This is maybe the second automa automated uh, lure, but it's automated by uh, a powder or a pill that you put in the chamber, and it generates gas and mm -hmm. bubbles and moves the bait and it, around. And it farts. I've eaten one of those pills before. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it's doing is it's farting its way through the water. <laughs> <laughs> my yeah. brain was there too this Steve. is uh this is 1950 to 1960 and uh it's i mean it looks like a flipping egg sinker with a with a hook hanging off of it or a bomb with yes. a, with, yeah it looks like the hindenburg which is about how successful it was exactly Crazy. exactly uh next <laughs> this is Lulu again. Uh, it's uh, Captivated Lures Incorporated out of Jacksonville, Florida. Everything good comes out of Florida. Uh, that's where the hover lure came out of, by the way. Um, wow. And again, this is a, another battery operated, and I have another picture of it if you go one more. So it's battery operated. Uh, I'm happy to see an O ring there for, you know, it, waterproofing it. Uh, sure. But it's got. It's got a prop in the front, a prop in the back, and you actually tie to the the uh, split ring that's on the top of the tail um, because it's always going away from you. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Hmm? I, yeah. I actually, Looking I was away. at the NF, I was in at the NFL CC Pigeon Forge show last week, and they had one of these for sale for $85, and now I'm kicking myself in the butt for not buying oh. it. I totally would have grabbed it just to see it. Did what? I wonder if it worked. Like you just would swim. It was brand new in the box, Good just God. like you're looking at right there. I should what have bought propelled the it thing. though. What, was there a propeller on the front? It looks there's like a a pad. there's okay. a prop on the front and there's a prop on the back. Two props. Yes. Yep. Crazy. Yep. That's unbelievable, man. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Pretty but cool. It, so it's swimming it's away. Cool. Is that what I heard? It's swimming yeah. away from you. Yeah. If you look at the oh, yeah, top yeah. of the tail, there's a split ring at the top of the tail. And then there's also a hook at the bottom of the tail and a belly hook. So it's like a or swim actually it... get back up under some hyacinths <laughs> or something. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like a golden Steve's, Steve's uh, mind's thinking. <laughs> it's like a flying lure almost. <laughs> Away. Yeah, yeah could exactly. We, could we attach a forward-facing sonar unit to the front of its head, so it could. Oh hell yeah! Down. Why not? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> an image That's back. awesome. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Through the rod, right? <laughs> yeah. Somebody said forward-facing <laughs> sonar <laughs> delight, <laughs> man. Green on the reel. Yeah. I wonder if that'll be the next thing. Reels. 
Holy Swing mackerel. Fish camera. Holy mackerel, right? Yeah, I, I would love to see a mashup of all the craziest lure things. Scent dispersion, you know, motorized. It would be like make a mashup. Oh, that would be, be a good illustration. Yeah. Somebody just draw the like craziest mashup, crazy worst lure ever. <laughs> I hate Brian, oh, have your, I, I mean, I bottom. think to that point, we really... Aside from the Senko being the worst lure ever, which I think we should <laughs> unanimously agree that <laughs> there's no bait that has killed more fish gut hooking like like uh, power bait. Like the original power bait, they would hold good. that thing for 15, 18 seconds oh. like the advertisement said. They really did. And if That's you didn't set trip. the hook, you gut hooked them. You but did. the Senko has gut hooked more fish. Everybody can catch them now, so it doesn't matter. It's, it was like it was like technology in reverse. So for me, the worst bait of all time is the Senko, and I, got, I always have them in the boat. Shocker, shocker like of the worst night. bait of all time. You gotta you gotta learn how to set the hook, BTC. Oh no, I can set the hook. I never. All I'm sure you can. When it's when to else. set the hook? I never hooked but anybody can catch them with a Senko. It, it, it went backwards. Hook. Went backwards in time. <laughs> it's like text messaging. We got all this technology. We can talk to anybody. But what no, just happened? Text. Reverse uh. technology. So my vote for worst bait of all time is the Senko. Eric? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I would say, I would say that's one of the best. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to I argue agree. with. <laughs> you don't have to do much. Man. Just throw it out. You know, I'm, going going my, I'm going with it's my made. strike king talking talking jig. The, the crazy thing is, is that the mm. the uh the Senko was not designed to be used the way that we ended up using it. It was designed really? as a stick bait. Yeah, it was a it was a sluggo imitation, hmm. and uh, yeah. yep, we we don't fish it that way. No, nah. anyway. No, nah, I remember yeah, the sluggo. The way it wobbles going down. Oh. Is, is, oh. They can't stand that. <laughs> no, so good. Don't go fishing it's without so it. Yep, Terry. Uh, I got, I got two more. Oh well, go ahead. Yeah. So we've got the the oh, Rebel Dark Star. Dark Star. Yeah. This. Oh, I remember that. that was so this bad. is uh, awful. You know. So this is like this in is the awful. early '80s. I remember this yep. one, but I don't remember what it. Did. Early 1980s, when graphite rods are really getting you know going, and so what do they do? Rebel decides that they're going to make graphite. Uh, uh, line ties and it's going to add sensitivity to your lure um, which doesn't make a bit of sense at all uh, the the crankbait was uh, it just it looks like a freak show um, I never threw any we couldn't sell them at the shop that, that I worked at um, but yeah the line ties and the hook hangers were either graphite which I don't think they couldn't have been Graphite. They had to have been graphite coated metal of some sort, but the whole concept of it was just dumb, and they yep. didn't last but a couple of years. What does Denny say about it? What's Denny's quote in there? Uh, all year long, the Black Star tears fish up. It's one <laughs> tough bait. The key for me is its wide distinctive wobble that lets the bass know it's coming okay <laughs> yeah i i can send you the ad if you want to read it matt it's strange it's interesting i didn't know denny brower knew what a crankbait was but yeah, yeah, right? was yeah exactly <laughs> no he was he was talking about the the, the fish that george cochran caught not him oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> george how'd you do with the dark star i've been tearing the fish up all year denny yeah. Anyway, the dark star. I'm, yeah, I, it's called the black star, actually. Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. It's the power of the bait. I'm sure. All confused. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, then the next one is uh, a Smithwick bait called the Blinker, and this one has blinking eyes, just like Livingston, right? Wow. Mm. Yeah. I mean, and this is Smithwick in 1975 has come out with this. Is that a Bojack shape plug? Looks like it. A little bit, yeah. Did they, they put blinking eyes in? 
and that they put blank and ice in that you had to change the battery out. And uh, from what I understand, Too bad. Um, you had to, uh, I mean, the, the, the thing would leak was its mm -hmm. biggest problem. So mm -hmm. I think that's all I had. And then no worky. Then no worky. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no blinky. My bait, no blinky. Yep. <laughs> wow. Good so. stuff. Steve Kennedy, got any more? Any more, Steve, to add to this? Uh... I got one for the best bait ever, and I probably need to apologize to my wife before I show it. But I think I'll All right, <laughs> full screen. Where are we? Full screen. Oh, oh yeah, yes. oh yes, I love that bait. Yes, a mermaid lure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I'm on the hunt for that. Let's do some horse trades, Steve. Yeah, but then I don't have one. That only catches the oh. small bucks. That came up in my Facebook feed today. I think is where I found it. <laughs> I was looking at bait. <laughs> Can it just? Yeah, oh, you're clicking on other things Man. too. I think. I can't imagine BTC. why. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> BTC, you need that in your bar rack, man, right next to that thing. Uh, right next to that, that orange, yeah, that redhead. That thing. Yeah, that thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good one, Hanger, Steve. Does anybody yeah, remember the Bass Pro Shops spinner bait that was the penis? So the it was a spinner bait, but instead of having a, a, a regular spinner bait lead head, it had a penis head with a skirt oh, yeah. hanging off of it. I yeah, I got a, I one. got the ad on my website. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it caught those website, big Tom. betting females is what what it said. That's brilliant. <laughs> Johnny Morris had a good that. sense of humor. Fast fishing archives. Yeah. Dot com. So who remembers that the, there was a crankbait with a honeycomb pattern on it? I just I don't remember ever. Oh, yeah. It was like a it was shaped like a little end, but it was a knockoff of. I don't remember who yes. made it, but that one may need to come that? back just with the forward facing stuff. Oh, I remember that bait. What was that? Come on, Eric. I don't remember what it was I, called. I, I have one oh, somewhere. But I, I, I don't think I got one. one. Damn it. Message board? Damn. That's about Damn all it. I got. Yeah. Message board. Terry, do you remember it? Honeycomb I don't, pattern? No, I don't remember it. There was a crank. I remember the aroma. pattern on the on the outside of it. it was, I remember and that. The JDM yeah. guys put the honeycomb pattern on the inside of their baits. What the heck? Ripping us off all the time. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Dang it! <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> but I'm kidding. Relax, everybody. You should have a show. Who did it first? Who did it best? Nah. All Not about me. copycats. You won't do it. Me? Nah. <laughs> Panger, what do you got for us, Holmes? Uh, I mean, my last one, which just kind of goes in line with the last couple one, was the uh, the lead weight company out of Missouri that James Watson was sponsored by called oh, yeah. Balls Out. Balls Out. Balls tackle, Deep. Where all balls the, Deep. Balls Deep Tackle? Yeah. It's where balls all deep. Of the lead weights were shaped like a set of nuts. <laughs> I have them here. <laughs> really? Yeah, Come on, man. <laughs> it, he literally had it on his jersey. <laughs> Balls deep oh, tackle. Oh, what in the salt salty balls. balls. <laughs> Look at that, man. I mean, that was like, I mean, that, that those were actually used in tournaments for more Recently. bottom contact. For more like bottom within, contact within the past 10 years. Like, yeah, he you had know what I'm like talking a, about on his boat. You know what I'm talking about, Tanger? For more bottom contact. Bottom <laughs> so, so good show tonight, Brian. <laughs> I, I, I had a meeting with the with the owner of Balls Balls Deep. Oh, and, uh, no, Brian, where were you? Houston. Down in Cancun with Ken? I think it was like Houston or something. I don't know. It was a classic. Weren't they based out of Missouri? Maybe. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. But like, I guess uh, you know, he was talking about sponsor Night Live at the time, and Becky was worried about Balls Deep tarnishing Mike's brand. I think. <laughs> he sent a banner to us too. I wish I had it somewhere oh, at the Ikenelli compound. Yeah, it's a fucking balls deep banner, dude. It looks like that. Oh yeah, I need that here. Nice guy though. 
That's a real lure. <laughs> that's so crazy. Balls deep, baby. Balls deep in conversation with the yeah, balls that's all deep I got. CEO. My, my vote for overall, though, like if I was to pick one, it's that hover lure. Bar, bar none. The hover lure, I think, hover is lure. the category. It's number one for me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Same for you, Terry. Same for you, Epic Eric. I, I, I'll give it to you. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, that's the holy grail right there. That needs to be in the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame. That needs to be in the Bass Fishing <laughs> Hall. That needs to be in the stupid Hall of Fame. That's just that's just yeah. amazing. That's incredible. Sorry. Sorry, yep. Dan Sunil. <laughs> no, that's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> but it hasn't killed nearly as many bass as a Senko, so. Oh, my gosh. Pete, <laughs> are you watching the Dean? Yeah, look at that. A whole a whole career made off of that bait. Oh, mm. man. Mm. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, without the Senko, he would have had, had to work for him. Hmm. Hmm. What are you got. saying about John Cox? What's wrong with you? No, no, it's, it's an amazing bait. <laughs> It's been fun, man. We uh, no stones left unturned here tonight, guys. Mm -mm. No, no. I'm no. Good. <laughs> good job, BTC. You made it through the first show. You yes. did a great job. Well never have to do this BTC. again. Thank you, um, Terry. What'd you think of your intro image? Did you like that? We're gonna brand you with that. Yeah, I was. Uh, you know, <laughs> you're you're a prick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just come out and say it. <laughs> Honestly, it, listen. It, there's but a I've lot been of called worse. There. There's a lot of Doctor Bunsen there, Honeydew so. Melon. <laughs> it's. I thought that was Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I missed. I missed my intro. I don't know what went down. But <laughs> we actually have. I think we actually have another another uh, check in from Ken. Whenever you're ready, Nathan. There he is. Oh, I know how this ends. Oh, oh no. I've seen He's it. driving, right? <laughs> oh, that's Ken behind, at the helm. He's got are the we, Are we going to roll it or are we just. <laughs> nah, yeah, it's it's gonna... fantastic. It's just a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. In a couple of seconds, it goes like this. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Ken, Ken's the only one left in the boat in a couple of seconds. <laughs> yes. It, uh, that one's pretty ugly. <laughs> Yeah. There's what I'm saying. All right. Now listen, I know I know it looked a lot like Ken. There are some similarities, but if you look at the expressions, Nathan. Oh. See? <laughs> oh, I was trying to read. Saying? Thanks. <laughs> Maybe the face shape's a little different, but the nose, the mouth agape. You know what I mean? Wait a minute. The guy on the right doesn't have eyeshadow on. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I Epicare. saw him and I thought of you, <laughs> yeah, Terry. Yeah, I don't That's think it looks Terry. like him at all. He's not wearing eyeshadow. <laughs> I think we have Ken now. Oh, we have Ken? Ken's back, folks. Ken Duke, everyone. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ken might not make next week's show, guys. Uh, hopefully he recovers <laughs> Oh, yeah, be wearing dentures the next time you see him. <laughs> no boy, no. and that's up for hundred miles an hour. <laughs> People are idiots. Well, that's a wrap for tonight, guys. Uh, Terry, thank you. You're the best. Always. Thank you, guys. And it's good seeing you, Steve, Steve, man. Paul Boston, Eric, like you, buddy. awesome. We got to talk. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. Good stuff from the 60s, 40s, 50s, 30s, and 1905, as always. <laughs> Somebody had a comment to you, uh, some, a bait from 1899. Uh, I missed it. I don't know. It was on YouTube an hour ago. I was okay. trying to track it, and yeah, I, I'll, I'll go back and see if I can answer it. Yeah, hit them in the comments. Thank you, yeah. Terry. Thank you, guys. Adios. Steve Kennedy, thank you for, dude. I don't know what you did to, to fix your 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 uh, your connection, but you did it. We saved it. I missed the intro, I guess, but we're here. It's been fun. iPad, iPad, iPad. It was Have fun, a good man. season, Steve. 
I, I yeah. always enjoy watching you fish. You're you're one heck of a stick, and you're one of the nicest guys in bass fishing. I don't know if you remember, but we we shared a meal down. I think it was one of the classics. Uh, Hot dogs. We hung out a little bit. Yeah, no, we had crawfish, man. Ooh, crawfish. Okay. Okay. Crawfish was delicious, man. So yeah. you're good people, man. Keep keep it rolling, man. Tight lines this year. Thank you. Absolutely, Thank you. man. Respect for your skills, man. Catch catch him up this year. We're looking forward to it. Toledo's gonna be fun. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Let's throw the big bait big bait this year. I'm planning on it. Always. <laughs> it's gonna burn me somewhere. Always does. But, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna catch mm-hmm. a big one somewhere too. So yeah. hard bait or soft bait? Ah, both. Always. Mm. I'm, yeah, I've gotten into the glides pretty hard here. So uh Ooh. But, but yeah, I'm, anyway, I got I got some new tricks. We're going <laughs> we're gonna see what happens. <laughs> I right on, it. man. I love it. You're the best, Steve. Thank you, dude. <laughs> Have a good one. Matthew? How's Mark, dude? He's good. His bowling team is ranked number 11th in the country. How about that? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah no, he, he is. He brought in seven new bowlers at this semester. I think it's going to mess with the uh, team chemistry. but. Mm. <laughs> We're talking high school or college? College, SNU, Southern Nazarene University. And they're recruiting? Dude, he's got like a $400,000 budget. I'm not kidding. Wow. For bowling balls? Yeah, he just brought in a dude. He's got a dude from Alaska, Hawaii, New York State, all over. They come to Oklahoma to to bowl for Mark Jeffries. Learn the wisdom that he imparts on the young minds. That's crazy. He's balls deep in bowling balls. Yeah. 400 K. Yeah, I, I was just over at the house. He's got probably 75 to a hundred bowling balls in there. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's big league. That's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. I thought you were supposed to go to learn stuff it. or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> None of this makes sense. Uh, Matt, <laughs> thanks, buddy. Thanks for the invite. I awesome. always enjoyed it. Happy You're Paris. the best, man. Great right. time, Matt. Great See time. You guys take it easy. All right, man. Have a good one, man. Night lines out there, brother. BTC. Dude, yeah. he rocked it tonight, man. This oh, was man. the show guess... you were waiting for, man. It was fun, engaging. Huh. I'll toast to that, man. I'll toast to that. Cheers to you, pal. How are you drinking? Cheers. I'm just drinking some water with a little bit of uh, pomegranate juice in there and maybe a twist of lemon. I got a fucking sore throat. Oh, my God. Uh, No, I can't. You know, BTC is feeling a little under weather tonight. He's Mm. got a sore throat. You powered Mm -hmm. through. You powered up. Really good show, man. Really good show. It was a fun topic. Uh, It was good because I stacked the deck and you guys were amazing. It It was an easy one. Well. Wasn't easy for me, but you guys carried it. It's awesome, man. No, man. I mean, the the hover lure. I mean, you know, this wasn't really a show you learn anything from, (laughs) you know what I mean? But I feel like knowing that the hover lure happened is kind of important. I think it's cool. It's like like knowing that the the Great Depression or the stock market crashed. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's important to know that the hover lure happened. It should give people hope. You know, because that made it to market somehow. <laughs> that you could invent a lure too one day. You can that invent a lure too. One that's day, right. that's right. That's right. I that's had a, right. I had an idea for a lure. You've got a lot of ideas. Yeah, we made a prototype. Man, it didn't swim for shit. It was so depressing. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It? Chameleon like bait it. company. Chameleon bait company. Uh, maybe I'll find that prototype and I'll show it one day. That's the name of the company, Chameleon Bait Company. Yours? That we that we were we were all in, man. My first bass tournament partner, Alan Handler. He's a goldsmith. He made my uh, you know my wedding band. Dude was good with uh, you know tools and dyes and cutting plastic and stuff. So we made some prototypes. We had another uh, hook called the Stiletto, a hook and weight system all in one. He lost it in the spoils on the Potomac, like third cast. We laughed our asses off on that one. It was the only prototype. 
<laughs> Not that he couldn't have made it. <laughs> it. It ruined the worm on the first bite, but it was still fun to think about. Oh, yeah, the Chameleon Bait Company. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right on. Mm -hmm. right on. Could never really engineer it right, but uh, probably today you could do it in, in China or something. <laughs> yeah, you can do anything in China. That's right. Well, that's right yeah hit that like there. button everybody thank you kasagi kasagi hey yes. final thoughts you know maybe we did learn something tonight so as i see some of the lures terry always brings an interesting perspective right because my knowledge got kind of stops maybe 70s right 70s and so but then you start to see 40s and 30s and you see these lures that bladed crankbaits you know where did the laser lure come from the blinking bojack right it's interesting, just, you know, how is it possible that the first motorized lure failed, then the second one failed, then the third one failed, right? And then the red light one failed, and then somebody does it again. Do these lure designers that come up with, like, laser lure, did they look at the Bojack or whatever that was, uh, the blinking one from uh, Smithwick, and go, that was a good idea. Let's do that again. And they knew it wasn't going to succeed, but they were going to sell a million of them and they made their money and that's all they wanted to do. Did they know? Did they know? So I pose to you that question because Bass After Dark is a very heady podcast. So while this was really, really fun, it begs the question, were they trying to make a quick buck and they knew? I'd love to interview some of those founders and designers and find out. Because yeah, for we're trying to catch designer. fish or fishermen. Uh-huh. There's a great well, aren't aren't isn't that the whole game anyway? But when it comes to that kind of design, outrageous, outlandish, what was the intent? What was the intent? Make a buck? Who cares? You just wonder. Yeah, but did you ever see a cat chase a laser around the room? Of course, that it wasn't everybody fascinated by that. I have two cats at the they're sitting upstairs right now. Don they love the laser, bro. You how many do you have? How many laser lures did you buy? Uh, I don't think I bought any of those. Really? Uh-uh. No. Nope. I, I have some. Yeah. You do? Somewhere. Did you catch a I fish do. on them? There's not yeah, it, a lot it, of it, good it, crankbait it. water in South Jersey, so mm. they don't do much cranking. But, folks, yeah. we have the top 10 that we uh, that Eric forgot about. We do have the top 10. Oh. Yeah, yeah, my job was to introduce the top 10, man. <laughs> and, and so Maybe. thanks for hanging with us. Nathan, spin it up. The top 10 predictions for 2024. Number 10, Bass and California Governor Newsom partnering to offer illegal immigrants free Bass membership 2024 daily planner and gender reassignment surgery. Number 9, Block at Millican Ceasefire brings peace to Bass World and Middle East. Number 8. Bass Blaster will be offered in English language version. Ha ha ha, just kidding, Jaybird. Love ya, Mang. Number 7. JVD follows KVD into retirement, but no one notices. Number 6. PETA classifies Iconelli screaming at fish as hate speech. Number 5. Open border policy makes it easy for U.S. anglers to flee to El Salto. Number four, Jacob Fouts demands reparations from fishing industry. Number three, Bassmaster Magazine refuses to fat shame large bass by calling them big girls. Number two, biologists discover that egg sinkers make up 75% of a walleye's diet. And the number one prediction for 2024 Forward-facing sonar achieves sentience. <laughs> That's good, man. That number one's kind of terrifying, dude. I'll be honest. Well, it's coming. It is coming. It's coming. Makes John, me happy yeah, to be kind, old. You're, you're kind of, you're like on, I'm on, long, I'm like on 17, you know, like whole 17. Like I'm on the back nine, deep into the back nine. You're just, you're around in the corner, man. You're around in the corner. So, I, you know, you might, yeah, you got a little Could bit happen more. Could happen any moment. Than me. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> that any was a moment, great man. top 10, man. Hats off to whoever thought of those. Nathan, is that all Nathan? It's all Nathan. Or is that like a, Nathan, that's incredible, man. It, it's a, it's the, a the group work. The Milliken thing was pretty funny, actually. Uh, it, it, it's <laughs> a group work, but. 
But Nathan and Ken <laughs> are savages. They are. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, get, I get about one out of ten every week. It's all that's that. not bad. Oh, look, man, that's not bad. When you're dealing with that I'm kind of mind. My weight. I mean, the brain power of that duo right there is extraordinary. How are you going to? I mean, if you get one in, you're superhuman. Yes. Dude, your so, smoking jacket. Could you stand up and give everybody a full look at that smoking jacket? I don't have pants on, but I'll stand right here. Uh, that's okay. I'm really liking that, man. Is that blue? It, it doesn't fit, as you can see. Yeah, this it's my okay. Son's. A little tight. A little tight. Yeah. Man, I this for my really son, Logan. You got the black jacket. Do you want to give us a uh, another look with the hat? Maybe like... Uh, yeah, raise the camera a little bit. Perfect, perfect. I would like to see the other hat selection so everybody could know what they missed out on. It was a fashion show in the beginning. Are they still available? Yeah, well, I, I, you know, this one here, we're pretty sure would have got me beat up. This Even my son told me that, and he's in the band. Okay, so right. hat, one, hat two, hat two, which one's the best? There was another one. There was a uh, Civil War hat that he had from uh, playing in the Civil War band. That yeah. was actually kind of cool. I don't have that one out here. Okay. And then here's another hat that I would say would get me beat up, a square bill. You know, Ike and Ellie and Gerald Swindle could pull off a square bill. I don't know how, being we're all about yeah. the same age. Me, yeah. I want to punch myself in the face when I wear one of these. So. <laughs> look, like it, look like somebody I want to hit. So I try not to wear them. <laughs> this is what it is, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me it ain't true, Eric. Come on. It's so true. I want to put you in the face right now, too. Oh, that's so good, man. I survived, man. Oh, you did that, great, man. How did everybody yes. do? How did, how did BTC do, everybody? Come on, man. Give him some props, man. Out of scale of one to ten, I want to see it right now. Give him a rating. I'm gonna punch in ten. I'm gonna start that off. Yeah, look at that, Nathan, with the applause. Nathan behind the scene engineered a great show tonight again. Thanks for yes, having me he on. Did. He killed it. Terry Batiste gave you a three. <laughs> but tens, man. Look at that, man. Look at all those tens. Oh, you guys, stop it. You set the bar low. Um, Solid two and a half from Paul Benson. Thank you, Paul. Paul, way to keep I'll, it real. Listen, man. I appreciate the honesty. Um, but that's a wrap, man. We got a terrible sore throat. Did I, one of my employees stayed stayed home all last week because well, he's got a young young one at home. But father in law oh, was sick. Look, there's a there's a poll right here. Great, you're at eighty one percent. Great. How did BTC do? All right. That's well, I'm gonna tell cool. a little story yeah. so let that poll marinate for a second. Marinate. And um, twenty nine votes, twenty eight. So so he stayed home last week. He was well while his family was sick. Mm -hmm. And then he came back to work this week as he got sick. And it got me sick. Jeez. I mean, bro, stay home when you're sick. Come to work when you're what not up? sick. What up with that? You know what I mean? I don't know. Fucking whatever. Nah. But anyhow. He's got the policy all topsy turvy. You don't go to work when you're sick. You stay home when you're sick. Yeah, don't. <laughs> no, I'm sick. Anyhow, thank you everybody that that that, that watched tonight, that hung around. Appreciate you guys. Ken you Duke. have no idea. Fourteen out of ten. Ken That's Duke. from Ken. Ken Ken's himself. tearing it up, dude. The ripping and the tearing, guys. Look it up. The ripping and the tearing. That's Ken Duke video. I give BTC <laughs> Ken. I give you a fourteen out of ten for that dancing, buddy. Gyrations. That's unbelievable, man. That's like twenty out of ten for me. It's just who knew? Who knew? It's fantastic. The guy is, he never ceases to amaze me. Mm -mm. It's a plethora of talent. Um, Truly. But yes. Thank, thank you, Nathan, you for everything you did behind the scenes tonight. Uh, thank you, Jacob Morrison, our, our, our new guy, the intern. Um, we'll see how it goes. And I'm excited, man. He's a He's got a, a, a degree in fisheries biology, and I love that. So I'm excited for that, man. Um, and he's a converted trout fisherman, fly fisherman. So came over to our side. Uh, shout out to Ron Stallings for the intro. James Riley for the best logo in bass fishing by far. Our next show is next week, January 18th. I don't have a topic quite lined out just yet, but that's a wrap. Eric, got anything for us? 
No, man. I, I think I've said so, it along the way, man. I mean, you know, that was, uh, I gave you my thoughts. Can you fix man. that, Eric? History. That? I don't, I don't think I can, man. How, what happened? See that? Maybe some red light therapy. <laughs> Finger massager. <laughs> yes. Probably. Put it in the moto chug. Hold on. I'll send you the moto chug and you can just do that. Right. We're going to do that. Know. Guys, thank Pop you. Thank stick. you, everybody. Yes. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, give us a review on, on, on iTunes, and, uh, and we'll see you next week.